just want to give him a kiss. Every single time I get him out, he strikes at me. G'day everyone, welcome back to Venom Diaries. Today is gonna be a fun one. We're coming up to Christmas, so we thought we'd do a naughty and nice. We're gonna look at a couple of naughty snakes, a couple of nice ones, both here in the Wagle Venom Center and up in our older Venom rooms. Uh, so start with me, we're gonna go and get one of our, no probably our naughtiest brown snake, all right? Um, his name is Roger. And Roger has serious attitude problems, okay? You'll notice he has extreme caution on his uh, enclosure. Um, and you've probably seen me get him out before. He is wild, all right? So, no doubt today will be another one of those days where he wants to... Ooh. <laughs> uh, yep, just as I suspected. Hoi. All right, so he's getting a bit of sores on him. Hey, he's getting a bit of sores on him, old Roger. Um, he's quite a character. Um, he's a wild caught snake, caught by Sunshine Coast snake catchers almost two years ago now. Um, and he is extremely reactive, especially to any sort of movement around him. Um, and he normally gives me a pretty good venom yield. All right, so I'm just gonna keep him moving here and I'm gonna get him up onto the pin and pad. Oh, he's already trying to bite. Here we go. Gotcha. And he's going nuts. <laughs> oh, he's gonna do his own thing. What are you gonna do, mate? No, he's going to come off. Oh, I just need him to settle so I can... There we go. So the Eastern Brown Venom is the second most toxic snake venom on the planet. And look at that, great yield. Great yield there. Woo! Cracker. And... Oh, nice bit again there. Oh, he's doing a poo-poo. <laughs> He missed me, I think. I don't know if you remember, I was doing this once, we were filming an episode, and a tiger snake pooed directly into my gum boot. Like, literally, it went straight down in there and into my sock. It was lovely. I'll get that off him. Yuck, I knew that was going to happen. <laughs> that just went down my gum boot. <laughs> the first squirt went straight down into there. All right, so that is Roger, the very naughty Eastern Brown. Um, we are going to get him back into his enclosure. They are the biggest killer in Australia when it comes to snake bite. All right. Back in there, mate. He's fully got me handcuffed here. Look at that. <laughs> Come on, you. Back in there. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do someone nice now. So follow me, I'm gonna get my snake hook. All right, so we're gonna grab a tiger snake. Um, and this tiger snake, he's a good bloke. And generally the tiger snake, especially these Tazzies, they are very chilled and we use them as our main training snake for when it comes to starting on venomous snakes here uh, in the venom program. Most of them, as I said, are very calm. All right, we've got a couple of Easterns that are a little bit jumpy, a bit defensive, um, but generally speaking, they are very calm snakes. And it's, they're still extremely dangerous. Like they're the fifth most venomous snake on the planet. You know, a bite from one of them will ruin your day very quick. Uh, but personality, nice. Hello, mate. How are you? What's going on? Hey, all right. A nice big fella, this one. We had Roger the brown snake, and then this is Tony the tiger. He actually featured in a bit of a media story a little while back. Um, old Tony the tiger snake broke the largest yield of venom we'd ever collected from a tiger snake, so that was really cool. But as you can see, he's just cruising, chilling, not really carrying on at all, unlike uh, old Roger the brown snake, and very easy to restrain. So I've just got him there. He's an older fella too now, old Tony. 
Um, but he still help and save human lives. All right. So we'll get him on here. Get your tail out of the way, mister. You don't want to bite that. Snakes can bite themselves generally, and they won't really be affected by it. Um, most snakes anyway. Ooh, good yield too, Tony. Have a go at that. Nice and yellow too. And yeah, so generally speak, you know, like when you come across a tiger snake in the wild, they generally just flatten out. They flatten their neck. They do that cobra sort of display. They try and make themselves look really intimidating. And then, boom, they just get out of there. Um, but yeah, and beautiful snakes. And the variation in them is just insane. Alrighty, we'll come this way. Thanks, Tony. I just want to give him a kiss. Alrighty, Tony, you go back in there, mate. We'll get you a little Christmas present soon. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump over to Old Venom and I'm going to show you another naughty snake. You can already hear it. Western Dimeback Rattlesnake. This bloke's got serious attitude. And hear that tail just going absolutely but oh see that strike that come all the way out here they literally strike almost their entire body length that's why i've got such a gap on my ear but look at his tail going absolutely bananas this snake's two years old now he's got a fair bit of size on him they grow to be the second longest rattlesnake species on the planet and yeah he falls on the naughty list for us because mate every single time i get him out he does that he strikes at me he goes absolutely bananas it is only defense, all right, in his defense. In his defense, it's only defense. Um, so what he's doing right now is he's warning me. Come any closer, mate. Boom, I'm gonna bite you. All right, so the tail, let, him, let, let me know he's over there. Because you know, a lot of these guys are found in thick scrub and in the prairies and so on around Arizona and um, Texas and, and other places like that. I guess it's like letting you know, hey, I'm over here, don't come near me, all right? Um, but they're just such impressive snakes and they do this, they hold themselves up, raise his head off the ground, his tongue is just going bananas right now and that tail, every time I move, it goes harder. So what he's doing actually is he's got a track on me, the infrared, so he's got heat sensory pits on his jaw structure there, his eyesight's terrible, so he's just seen this big red blob in his vision and he's like, righto, could be a threat, could be a potential predator. Every time I move, the rattle goes harder. Start to slow down again. And then raises up. Really cool, really impressive snakes, but mate, they pack a hit. So it's not as toxic as a lot of our Aussie stuff, like brown snakes and taipans and death adders and so on. But the venom is so dirty, necrotic bite sites. People end up losing limbs, crazy skin grafts and so on, and lots of anti-venom, like lots of anti-venom. Like if this snake bit me, I'd be getting 30 plus vials of anti-venom and it's only a sub adult. From a big six footer, be getting 55, 60. I've heard of people getting more over 80 vials of anti-venom from a snake, like an adult Western Dimeback rattlesnake. The females get bigger than the boys. This one's a boy. It's got that long tail. It's really thick, holds his hemipenes. The girl's tail's a bit shorter. Um, and every time he sheds his skin, that rattler gets longer, so another little piece grows on there. When they get too long, they normally end up knocking it on something, and it just snaps in half, and they just regrow it. Woo! What an exciting bit of nature. Like, who would have thought? Evolution's wild, isn't it? Absolutely wild. Alrighty, so next nice snake on the list is this spotted black snake, also known as a blue belly black snake. Chilled as, what a bloke. His name's Robbo. Alright. Um, so, you know, related to um, the red belly, they look very similar to a red belly on top there. So they vary heaps, this snake, like, like, holy moly, they vary in colour. And some can be like just jet black with literally a blue belly. And then others, they get these speckled or almost spotted looks like this guy's got here. Um, sort of hard to see, but yeah, spotted black snake, all right? And we've had this fellow at the park here for probably 10 years now. He's really quiet. He was on display for a while, um, and now he's up upstairs in um, in the venom rooms. He we just use him in shows and so on, and he's got a great personality. As you can see, he hasn't flattened his neck once. He hasn't tried to strike at me. Absolutely nothing from him. He's a really quiet snake. 
However, these snakes in the bush can be a different story. I'm telling you now, I've caught a few of them and mate, some of them will give you a run for your money. Remember, if you're out in the bush, leave them alone. Now, obviously, I'm a trained professional, so it's a different story here. Um, oh, he's starting to flatten his neck out a little bit there. Very typical for a black snake. They, they, they flatten their neck like that if they feel threatened. Um, and they, their tongue starts to go berserker. But all he's trying to do is get away. All right, that's literally all he's trying to do. But they are such a stunning snake. He's an abs. Oh, he's had a crack. <laughs> I finally, finally found the personality in him. <laughs> he's never ever done that. Um, but yeah, generally this is what he does. All right, we take him down the shape. He just cruises around, never flattens his neck, does absolutely nothing. All right, but that he is out here in the sun, so um, he might be taking that opportunity to um, get a little bit excited out here. There's a few people walking behind the camera there as well, so that might be also why he's um, just flattened his neck out and had a bit, of a, a bit of a strike. But anyway, generally speaking, when it comes to venomous snakes and what I've got here at the park, this one is a real good bloke, all right? And as I said, I've had him for about 10 years, um, and he was about 10 years of age when I got him, so like, he's literally coming up to 20 years of age. He's a captive-born snake, um, and yeah, spotted black snakes are absolutely gorgeous, and yeah, they vary heaps in color patterns and so on beautiful critters and this guy is definitely on my nice list for christmas look at him all righty so we're out here with one of our naughty snakes our naughty and nice episode um, and this is our female king cobra and mate she is a absolute firecracker and you can see right here she's already hooding up we've just come out on the grass um oh she's growling as well right now very typical for a king cobra she has a attitude, mate. Ooh, see how high she come then? Mouth wide open. Danger. <laughs> I get really exo excited handling this snake and also really nervous, because holy moly, every time I handle this snake, she just hoods up, growls, opens her mouth up. She means absolute business. And a bite from this species is horrific. Multiple vials of antivenom are required. If she was to give you a full on bite, load you up, you would be in serious, serious trouble. Look at the size of her now, look at that. So confident, so dangerous. <laughs> and look how much she can, she's literally raising almost the first third of her body off the ground there. And hear that, growling. But they're programmed to be like this because they share the jungles over in Indonesia, Southeast Asia, India, even China, with some seriously big animals like elephants, tigers, leopards. So then they need to look very intimidating so they can bluff their way out of situations. Obviously, a lot of those bigger animals like elephants aren't going to eat these things, but if they stood on one, you know, a five ton Asian elephant, ruin her day pretty quick. So they're extremely defensive. Far out, they're amazing snakes. But yeah, she falls on the, uh, let's say the naughty list for um, a <laughs> naughty and nice episode. Um, even though she's a bit naughty, I, I'm pushing it. <laughs> gonna have to call here, I reckon. But yeah, I absolutely love this snake, man, she is wired today. Yes. Alrighty, and our last snake of the episode, the world's most venomous snake, might I add, is nice. Right, this is the inland taipan or the fierce snake, and they're literally drop for drop the most toxic snake on the planet. One drop of venom from this snake can kill 110 grown men, no worries, all right? And it's wild to think that the inland taipan, has n there's no recorded human fatalities from this species. Who would have thought, all right? Um, and generally speaking, he's a, he's a pretty quiet snake. He's been with the collection for a long time here at the park, about 15 years now. Great example of a prime adult male. At the moment, he's nice and golden in color because it's summer. In winter, he goes almost jet black because where you find him out in the western Queensland, black soil plains, so hot in summer. Like I'm talking right now out there, it's about 45 degrees Celsius by about 10 a.m. I do need to be very careful. They are renowned for exploding, typical type in. Um, 
But yeah, they're such a fascinating snake. They spend about 90% of their life underground, okay? So rarely do they come to the surface. They're underground hunting rats um, and because it's so hot out there most of the year. It's just harsh, remote country out there. It's just open plains, there's nothing. There's literally nothing. The ground's just cracked apart because it's so dry and the crevices can be eight meters deep. That's where they live, down in there. But yeah, he's on the nice lift, all right? So um, he, again, he's an ex-display snake. We had him on the, in the Lost World of Reptiles for a long time. Now we just use him for shows and education. Real nice fella, really great personality. Um, and yeah, it's just, it's wild. Because when you think of, you know, the world's most venomous snake, people just think, oh, they're absolutely off their head. But I actually find them pretty easy to work with. Even the wild ones I've caught, um, they're generally pretty quiet. They calm down pretty quick. Um, yeah, just such an amazing species. And yeah, so he's on the top of the nice list for um, our naughty and nice list episode. So he's, a, he's an amazing snake. I love this fella. And uh, he'll be capitalizing on this sun at the moment. UV is really important for reptiles. We always get him outside, especially on days like today. And um, let him soak up those rays like they would in the wild. Um, and he's just out here. Doesn't seem threatened at all. He's just flicking his tongue a little bit, working out what's going on. He's great in our shows, this fella. We, we get him down the show pit there, he cruises around. Wild, wild, isn't it just wild? Like right there in front of me, the most venomous snake in the world. Right there, crazy. Alrighty guys, that is it for this episode. If you think we've missed any naughty or nice snakes for the list, let us know in the comments, all right? But that's it for this episode. You know the drill, like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you all for the next episode.